You are watching TFI. Well, greetings! And off the back of the last video that I did on the channel, which was my Oculus Rift versus HTC Vive comparison in 2019, pros versus cons, a common question or a comment that I get on any VR content that I do is, do you think that 3D card is going to work with VR? Are we going to be able to 3D model in VR anytime soon and will it work? And my kind of default go-to response at the moment with the way things are right now is, is no. There's too many issues with trying to be precise and do CAD inside the VR space for it to be something that you want to do. I'll talk about this a bit more uh, towards the end of the video uh, after I've covered the main bulk of this, but no, it's not something that I think is, uh, is achievable. However, what I'm about to talk about and show you is the most exciting, it's the most achievable, workable, realistic, and desirable integration of VR into our 3D CAD workflows in the business space that I've seen yet. And it comes from Hewlett Packard. It's a very, very simple idea, and it's also just in the prototype stages at the moment as well. Bear that in mind. It's just an idea, but it's brought to us by Road to VR, who've reported on this. All credit to the, the uh, to uh, Road to VR for this article. But Hewlett Packard wants to enhance traditional CAD workflows with its VR snacking idea. Now they can drop the snacking term immediately. I want to head thump the wall every time I say the word snacking. Come on, please not use that. It's not snacking. That's, that's not a thing. But the idea is extremely simple to the point where, yes, some people will laugh and mock this, but it actually, it could work. It really could work. The idea is you're working in 3D card on your traditional 2D monitor. On the left-hand side here, in this example, you've got what looks like Autodesk Revit. On the right-hand side, you've got what looks like Enscape. This is 3D card. This is visualization. So you're doing your thing. You hit a button whether that's a button built into the Autodesk application or the 3D CAD application, or whether it's a proprietary port communication tool from HP, I don't know yet, but it'll port your data into the visualization package and then light up the VR headset. And then all you do is you just pick up this handle here with the headset attached to it, and then you just bring it to your face, and then you can look at your design, you can look at your scene in VR, do what you need to do, look at what you need to look at, review what you need to review, sit it back down on the desk and then just shimmy a bit to the left and you're back working in 3D CAD. It's a very, very simple idea, but it could work. And of course, of course, sure, you can do this right now if you really wanted to. This is nothing more than an, whether it's their own proprietary headset or a, a Rift Vive or one of the variants just snapped onto a stick, I don't know. But yes, you can just have your own headset on your own desk and just pick it up and do and do this but this this is this doesn't it's not it's all about convenience it's all about the convenience and the accessibility of something like this which could make all the difference it, this could make all the difference by just being accessible and easily adoptable because in business that that makes it that really makes the difference when you're trying to convince your director or your IT manager to adopt something like this suggesting to them that everybody has a VR headset the size of this sat on their desk in their work area with cables everywhere for people to trip over. The difference between that and this, a little neat stand on the desk that they just pick up and do this with, it's extraordinarily, just mind-bendingly simple. But that would make the difference. HP get that, and I commend them for it. They're onto something here. Uh, they, they, under, they, they, mu they must understand what people need and want and what the issues are with adopting technology like this, and they're going right for it here. So well done to them for that. So there's a couple of issues that I see with this though that would need to be overcome in order for this to be very workable. And not the hardware's one thing, the software's another. Now they've used a good example in this uh, example picture here where they've got Autodesk Revit on the left-hand side and they've got Enscape on the right-hand side. And that's a good example because there's already, even today, a single push-button solution for getting data out of Revit and into the VR space through Enscape. It's on the ribbon bar, you click it, Enscape pulls the data out of Revit, lights up your VR headset, you put it on and you're ready to go. There's no saving files out, there's no setting up scenes, there's no clicking buttons to turn on the headset, it just happens. Uh, whereas there's nothing like that for Autodesk Inventor for Fusion 360, uh, there's probably nothing like that for SolidWorks and uh, Katia and anything else that's sort of manufacturing slash mechanical engineering focus, which is what this channel is built on Autodesk Inventor. Uh, so in order to get 
today invent the data into vr you'd have to save it out you'd have to open up a secondary application bring the files into that application you'd have to then check to make sure that when you're in vr the item is one-to-one -one scale it's at eye level perhaps it's not too far away from the user where they start it needs to be at a point where you don't need to write a user guide for someone who's not tech savvy to get their head around it because if that's needed then this kind of all falls apart regardless of how good the uh, the hardware is so that's that's one thing that we'll need to overcome whose responsibility it is to actually put that button in and make the software flow its data through different applications in the vr headset i don't know i don't know that's i guess one of the reasons why we haven't got to the point where it's really workable right now another another thing and this is nothing that hp really can do and that is how many how many people really need to see their designs in vr this would be great for the architectural space no doubt about it putting a building together you're putting a commercial space together and you want to see it i like you're standing inside it in vr no brainer the civil space structural highways infrastructure uh, even even vehicle design no brainers being able to see something in human scale like you're there is amazing for design reviews for checking just for getting a feel about what it is you're doing and how it's coming along no brainer but in inventor fusion 360 when you're modeling up little widgets like the size of a mobile phone or little metal bars little parts what benefit is there to seeing those in in vr possibly not that great of a benefit but there are people using autodesk inventor who do design bigger structures vehicles huge you know, infrastructure projects can be done in Autodesk Inventor. So there is potentially uh, a use for this in the likes of Inventor and Fusion 360, but a few people would be alienated by this and wouldn't necessarily need to uh, to see it or be interested in it. But uh, for those who are, this is something that's, that's looking really good. It's looking really promising, and I really do hope that HP uh, push ahead with this. And I'll be more than happy to test it for them if... <laughs> want to send a prototype over i'll check it out mate and i'll do a video on it for you not a problem uh so back on to the the card in vr uh, discussion because this isn't card in vr this is reviewing your card in vr it's not actually creating the card in vr there are currently solutions out there which will let you make data and geometry in the vr space for example if you if you go to the steam store there's an application there called virto studio it's made by a small indie developer. I think it's just a one-man band. And he's put together this 3D CAD modeling... I don't know if it's CAD. It's probably not CAD. I think it's just primitive shape creation with sketches and, and whatnot. So we can do it now. There are programs out there that will do it now. But it's harboring so many of the issues that I see as being complete deal-breakers with the way things are right now. And that is precision. CAD is very precise. And in VR, you're essentially... A, get rid of this uh right with um with CAD and VR you're waving around a hand controller at a very precise object you need to pick a point you need to pick an edge and you've got you're waving a controller around and in VR space you've got this laser stick coming out of here that you're using to pick entities and move things around and after quite some time in VR and your arms elevated for a while it becomes achy your hand becomes shaky and it becomes more difficult to pick things that's when things start to get frustrating and that's when you think to yourself do you know what? It's not quite working. I'm not ready for this. It's just, I'm, I'll go back to my mouse cursor and my 2D monitor. What it needs in order for CAD and VR to come together and work effectively is a very skilled team of UI designers from a big software house to put something together that solves a lot of those issues. Intelligent snapping, intelligent AI predictions when you're going for a tool set, being able to pick or know what you're thinking and what you want to go for when you point at an edge to be able to pick at the edge that it thinks you're going for even though you're not precisely on it for example uh, you need to have access to be able to put typing into into the into the card space numbers text parameters dimensions without pointing at a number pad with a stick there needs to be clever ways of doing that before it's something that you'd want to use rather than something that you think oh, i'll have a play around with this and then you it, it kind of doesn't work out. Anyway, I'm waffling now. That's uh, VR snack, uh, VR d d on a stick from Hewlett Packard. Amazing idea. I hope they do 
go through with it and the uh, the progress the development on this because it's something that i will be extremely interested in keeping a close eye on not just for the youtube channel but also for my day job i see it being a, a good use for this uh, where i work right i'm gonna knock that on the head there mate i think i've talked about this one enough and i'll see you in the next one let me know what you think about this in the comments down below yes i know it is just a headset on a stick but don't forget it's all about the convenience and uh, i I don't we don't have costs or anything like that but um can you, you can't put a price on convenience well you, you can i'm sure hp will but um i can't wait to see it anyway i'll see you in the next one toodles